Now we are going to discuss about the major component of uh, concrete. So the major component of concrete is aggregates. So aggregate gives you the strength of concrete. Aggregates are the inorganic materials in the concrete. So this does not have any chemical reactions. And but this gives you strength. And more. Uh, now we are going to discuss about different aggregates which are used in concrete. So. We will use prime aggregate and coarse aggregate. So, what is this? Actually, if I see a concrete structure, a concrete structure consists of first coarse aggregates. The voids between the coarse aggregate is filled by fine aggregates, and these fine aggregates, the voids between fine aggregates is filled by cement. So, this cement is used as a bonding agent between this coarse aggregate and sand and gives strength. Such way, that's why the concrete is formed. Okay. So, when we are using this, there are two types, right? Fine aggregate and coarse aggregate. How do you differentiate it? By doing sieve analysis. So, if I, when I have done a sieve using 4.75 mm sieve, Whatever it is retained above comes under coarse aggregate. That means above 4.75 mm size of aggregate comes under coarse aggregate and below 4.75 mm of aggregate comes under fine aggregate. So we have different types of fine aggregate, sand and also surki. Surki is a local name where brick is finely grinded where the bricks are finely grinded is known as surki and we have different types of sands, river sand, pit sand and sea sand. Generally, river sand consists of round particles and so this river sand is mostly used in plastering cases. And pit sand will have angular shape. So what happens is when there is some angular shapes of uh, sand, then there is some reduction of strength. And sea sand consists of some chemicals, so it can affect the it can affect the uh, cement or water, and also causes efflorescence. Efflorescence is again a white powder. We have already discussed about it. And different types of coarse aggregate are stone, ballast, and gravel. Now we are going to deal something about a process of bulking. So, what is bulking? And one more thing, when we are doing, uh, when we are uh, mixing concrete, will you do wave etching or volume etching? You will obviously do wave etching. You are not going to do volume etching. Why you are not going to do volume etching? That's because of bulking. Yes, what is bulking? When sand, when some sand absorbs moisture from the atmosphere, then there is a thin layer formed on the surface of the sand. This, because of this water thin layer, this sand particles are split up or they will ripple each other. And when they are rippling, the volume of this sand heat increases. So when the volume increases, there will be wrong measurements. And sometimes because of this bulking, when they have mixed in concrete, there can be some ripple. Because of this ripple nature, there can be some cracks in concrete or there can be some shrinkage in concrete. So that's why bulking of sand, we should avoid uh, volume matching of sand because of this bulking, bulking property of sand. Bulking means increasing in volume of sand. Next, fineness modulus. So, what is fineness modulus? Where 15% of the uh, most of 15% or I can say most of the sand particles are passing through the seam is known as fineness modulus. So, if I have the uh, fineness modulus of 2.2 to 2.6, it is called as fine sand. And when the finest modulus is between 2.6 and 2.9, it is medium sand. And when it 
is having 2.9 to 3.2, then it is coarse sand. In the preparation of concrete, you should not uh, should not use a sand which is greater than 3.2. So if it is greater than 3.2, never use it in preparation of concrete. Next, we go to coarse aggregate. In the coarse aggregate, flaky and elongated aggregates. So what is flaky and elongated aggregates? Suppose if I take some aggregates over this coarse aggregates, some six coarse aggregates. Now I am going to calculate the mean dimensions of these aggregates. So when I calculate mean dimension of uh, dimensions of aggregate, let me assume the mean dimension is D. So I am going to test it for flakiness. Flakiness means means very thin. So if I if I take this Here there are three aggregates for me. See, suddenly its thickness has reduced, right? So because of this reduction of thickness, it is called as flaky. So which particles are called as flaky where its thickness is less than 0 0.6 times d? What is d mean dimension? So mean if mean dimensions of aggregates, if any of the mean dimension of aggregate is less than, its thickness is less than 0 0.6 times of D, then it is called flakiness. And if you see lengthwise, it has elongated, that means increased. So, which aggregates are called as elongated in the, uh, aggregates? So, uh, where length greater than 1.8 D, then we call them as elongated aggregates. You should not use flaky aggregates or elongated aggregates in the preparation of concrete. Okay, you should not use flaky or elongated. How will you define flakiness and elongation? By the standard values. Next, crushing, impact and bearing strength. As per IS code, crushing and impact strength for bearing surfaces should be 30 percentage. How will you calculate this 30 percentage and 40 percentage? Suppose, first you take a mold of sample of aggregates and you crush them and try to pass it through the sieve and see the percentage uh, retained and do W1 by W2 percentage percentage passed by total weight of aggregates, then you will get bearing for bearing surfaces allowable is 30 percentage, non-bearing surfaces it is 45 percentage. So WS means bearing surface. So what is bearing surface and non-bearing surface? Suppose if you consider a road or pavement, there is more rupture on the surface, right? So, when there is more rupture on the surface, there is possibility of wear and tear. So, that's why roads, pavements, etc. are called as wearing surfaces, while as the columns, slabs are known as non-wearing surfaces. So, for wearing surfaces, you need uh, more crushing strength. That's why it is 30% only allowed. Uh, for non-wearing surfaces, it can crush up to 40%, so no problem. And similarly, wearing strength, for wearing surfaces, required is 30 percent, and for non-wearing surfaces, required is 50 percent. And next, as the size of the aggregate increases, strength of concrete increases, right? Right. So, as uh, when you take, when you consider coarse aggregate or fine aggregate, as the size of the aggregate increases, strength of the concrete also increases. Then, what happens to cement? What happens if size of the cement uh, cement increases? When size of cement increases, strength decreases. Why it is in reverse? Why? Because cement is a compound which is used for bonding. So, for bonding, larger cement particles have, will have less surface area. But smaller cement particles will have more surface area. So, when I take this, uh, for bonding, I need to have more surface area in contact with each other. So, if it is possible in less size of cement. So, when you are talking about concrete in cement, size of the particle should be small. In aggregates, size of the particle should be large. Then only you will get good strength. Okay. Next, well graded. So, there are different grades of, uh, different graded types of aggregates. There are well graded, uniformly graded, poor, poorly graded and gap graded. Out of this, we will use well graded particles only in the preparation of concrete. We are not going to use uniform graded or woodly graded or gap graded. Sometimes, in special cases, 
where strength is not important, then uh, strength is not important and cost is important, then you can use gap graded aggregates. That's not a problem, but, uh, but only at a place where strength is not important. And shape. There are different types of shapes. I can say rounded aggregates, angular aggregates, and irregular shape of aggregates. Out of this, I will use mostly, I will prefer to use angular aggregates only. Rounded aggregates as an individual will have more strength, but what happens is when I mix with concrete, there will be less amount of bonding. When there is less amount of bonding, it won't give you proper strength in concrete. But angular aggregate as an individual will have less strength, but when you mix it in concrete, because of its more homogeneous nature, with, uh, when it mixes with concrete, it is the best source for use. Uh, Use of this in concrete. It's generally irregular shape of concrete. So irregular shape of uh, aggregates we never use in concrete. And even this platinous and elongated aggregates are also comes under shape of aggregate. But somehow we are not going to use any flaky or elongated aggregates in the preparation of concrete. So this is about aggregates. Try to note this all these points.